What happened to Jason Momoa's remake of The Crow? The Crow remake started life as a very different movie, but when it seemed Jason Momoa would play Eric Draven, it took a dramatic turn in direction. Jason Momoa exited The Crow remake due to creative differences, leaving Bill Skarsgård to take over the lead role. The 2024 remake of The Crow faced challenges and controversies, leading to mixed reviews before its premiere. The new version of The Crow aims to pay homage to the original while exploring themes of loss and mourning through a gritty romance. As The Crow remake soars into theaters, fans of the series wonder what happened to Jason Momoa. Over the years, audiences were treated to sneak peeks and overheard rumors about what was in development concerning the controversial remake of The Crow. However, after teases about famed Game of Thrones and Aquaman actor Jason Momoa as the leading role, many quickly noticed that the Crow remake looked very different from what they expected. While the plot of the Crow remake now flutters about social media feeds, the story of what happened behind the scenes remains a point of interest. A tale of life, death, and rebirth of a horror classic. As this Crow flies, it's revealed that its path towards cinemas was anything but straight. Considered a classic of the gothic horror genre and a groundbreaking film for modern superhero cinema, 1994's The Crow starred the late Brandon Lee. Based on the James Obar comic book series of the same name, The Crow tells the tale of Eric Draven, a musician who returns from the dead to seek revenge for the double homicide of him and his fiancée, Shelley. Critically acclaimed and dearly beloved, The Crow became a full-fledged phenomenon. The cultural impact of The Crow is undeniable as evidenced by its several sequels, TV show, and enough branded merchandise to keep Hot Topic stocked for multiple lifetimes. However, as people revisit The Crow and mourn the loss of its star, who tragically lost his life during filming, a remake prepares for a June 2024 debut. How The Crow remake struggled to get off the ground. Slumberland and Beetlejuice tell different stories, but Flip's demeanor takes after the ghost with the most and makes a good case for his return. While any remake of a classic film often proves controversial, many seemed hopeful that actor Jason Momoa could carry on the spirit of the 1994 movie. No stranger to comic book films and able to bring charisma and success to DC hero Aquaman, many were curious to see what he'd do with the role of Eric Draven. However, featuring a revolving door of talent and a long history, this Hollywood remake has a complicated backstory many are unaware of. Navigating development hell can prove challenging, as demonstrated by the struggles of projects like the Beetlejuice sequel in 2024's The Crow. However, the demise of a franchise isn't always as final as many think and sometimes amounts to a long, strange journey to the big screen. The story of The Crow reboot began in 2008 when filmmaker Stephen Norrington announced a realistic and gritty remake. With the Crow sequels failing to reach the heights of the original film and the series beginning to stagnate, the opportunity to retell the story of Eric Draven was there but proved tumultuous to adapt. For almost a decade, numerous prominent figures were either announced or rumored to be involved with the project before ultimately departing. Although among the most noted people attached to the remake was James Obar, who planned to consult and eventually co-write the film after showing initial reluctance towards the idea. Comparing the new project to the Universal Monsters Dracula and Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula, Obar showed enthusiasm for a different take on his source material. However, the bankruptcy of Studio Relativity Media would temporarily stall the project, leading it to be resurrected under the title of The Crowryborn as production shifted to Highland Film Group and Electric Shadow. While countless names like Loki's Tom Hiddleston, Guardian of the Galaxy's Bradley Cooper, True Blood's Alexander Skarsgård, and even Luke Evans of Dracula Untold fame were all cast as Eric Draven. None garnered more excitement than Jason Momoa. By 2016, reports circulated that director Corin Hardy and Momoa had begun collaborating on the project, with filming set to commence in 2017. With visible progress and test footage showcasing Momoa's dedication to the role, The Crow Reborn appeared destined for success. However, just a month before the planned production, the Crow Reborn seemed dead on arrival. Jason Momoa and Corin Hardy departed from the project, with the latter citing creative differences with the rights holder. Meanwhile, Jason Momoa reflected on Instagram how much The Crow meant to him, how playing the role of Eric Draven was a dream come true, but the stars had not aligned the way he liked. Ultimately, the exit of The Crow Reborn's driving forces marked a disappointing conclusion to a once-promising venture, 
but it wouldn't signify the end of the Crow's saga. What happened after Jason Momo left? Juan Carlos Fresnadillo and Javier Gutierrez were also signed on to direct the 2020 for remake of the Crow at various stages of development. The Fast and Furious series will have a mammoth feud take place soon, but coincidentally, two actors almost got connected way before this film, after surviving numerous cancellations. Casting changes and fleeting directorship, skepticism loomed over the Crow's potential return, particularly with Jason Momoa pursuing other projects. However, like countless other Hollywood movie reboots, remakes, and sequels, there was a sense that the show had to go on. Upon the exit of Jason Momoa, Corin Hardy, and any previous project contributors, it became evident that the Crow didn't simply resurrect after their departure. It evolved, due to Hardy's creative differences. The film had to adapt to embody a new vision and the individuals endeavoring to revive Eric, Draven's character from the grave. Unsurprisingly, the direction isn't the only thing that had changed as details unraveled before the crows intended. Audiences and the movie found new life. Development picked up in 2020, determined to deliver the horror remake long after the project's announcement and as the majority of the past sequels had faded into obscurity. Now that Rupert Sanders and Zach Balin were spearheading the next remake of The Crow, the film took on a different look and tone, drawing inspiration from the music of The Cure. The two aimed to create a gritty romance film exploring themes of loss, mourning, and morality, while previous versions of The Crow remake hoped to set themselves apart from the 1990 for film. Sanders and Balin sought to pay homage to it, viewing the 2024 adaptation of The Crow as both a successor to the original film and a tribute to Brandon Lee. The movie undoubtedly had a hard act to follow with some pretty big ambitions to chase, especially when it came to casting. After Jason Momoa surrendered the role, and his brother Alexander had been previously in talks for it, famed horror actor Bill Skarsgård became cast as the violent undead vigilante. Additionally, musician F.K. Twiggs would take on the role of Shelley. In February of 2024, the world would get its first glimpse at the new Eric and Shelley, with a trailer following it in March. Unlike the Jason Momoa test video, which showed audiences what could have been, these two promotions for the upcoming movie showed what it would be when the film premiered in June. With people criticizing the new look for Draven as the crow and ultimately left unsure about various elements of the trailer, the movie proved divisive before it could even reach theaters. Needless to say, doubts expressed by the original director, Alex Proyas, didn't help public perception, nor did original cast member Ernie Hudson, who praised Skarsgård but felt Lee's performance was the definitive take on the character. What the Crow's development has to say about remakes One version of the remake reportedly cast Andrea Riseborough as the Crow villain top dollar. Jason Momoa's electrifying performance as Dante in Fast X is a franchise best, and quietly a perfect audition for James Gunn's DC Universe. When discussing the art of storytelling, classic tales become told and retold, explored from different vantage points and through various individuals. What's fascinating about films is how many different adaptations there are of stories like King Kong, Dracula, or, in this case, The Crow. At its heart, 2024's The Crow isn't trying to replace what came before or even surpass it. Above all else, what Skarsgård and the rest of the cast want to do is revive it. For better or worse, if there's anything this on-screen odyssey has to teach, it's hard to blame someone for sharing their favorite stories or wanting to be a part of them. As people ask what The Crow remake could have looked like or if it needed to exist in the first place, it's easy to overlook how many people believed in it. Whether Momoa or Skarsgård, there is love for what the comics, movies, and TV shows based on them achieved. Perhaps it may not make sense to remake a beloved horror film that remains a horror classic, but maybe it's just another way of making sure it lives on. See Jason Momoa take over for Brandon Lee as The Crow. When The Crow was released in 1994, it was a sleeper hit, meaning that even though it was originally unsuccessful, the vigilante drama ended up being a major success. However, the tragic circumstances surrounding the film meant that a sequel was never made, and all attempts to remake the movie have been shut down until now. Even though Bill Skarsgård is set to put on the leather jacket and face paint in the upcoming reboot, Jason Momoa was one of the first actors that producers looked at for The Crow, 
and now you can see what the Aquaman actor would have looked like if he'd gotten the part. For those who haven't seen the mid-90s classic, the Crow movie was based on the caliber comic of the same name created by James Obar. The Crow is a super being that brings tortured souls back from the dead long enough for them to enact revenge upon their killers using the Crow's supernatural powers. Brandon Lee played Eric, the reincarnation of the Crow featured in the 90s film, and, thanks to Fortress of Solitude, an AI technology, fans can now see what Jason Momoa would like as the Crow as well. In the AI-generated images curated by Anderson Luis using Midjourney, Jason Momoa becomes the Crow. Luis instructed the software to create a Momoa Crow look in the Tim Burton style. Although Burton wasn't involved with the original The Crow, the film was released a couple of years after Burton's popular Batman flicks, and the production design borrowed heavily from the auteur style, featuring gothic overtones and inspiration from German expressionism in the feature. In all of the images, the AI preferred to showcase Jason Momoa as the crow caught in the rain, soaking the Hawaiian actor's long locks, though his makeup somehow seems to stay intact. The DC actor looks menacing as he glares at someone off-camera, and one can only imagine the type of damage he's about to inflict upon his chosen victim. In most pictures, Momoa is wearing the classic black clothes of the crow, although, in one image, the actor's shirt didn't render properly, and neither did the makeup depicting a shirtless Momoa sneering at the rain instead of the murderous vigilante. Jason Momoa was one of the first actors that producers looked at for the Crow remake, and while the part eventually went to Bill Skarsgård instead, Momoa made it all the way to screen tests. Below, you can see the test footage of what Jason Momoa actually looked like as the Crow, and it's incredible. While many have pointed out that Momoa is quite a bit bigger than Lee and Skarsgård, and how the typically lean the Crow is usually portrayed, the most important aspect of the crow is the makeup, and Momoa is completely rocking the look. In addition to Jason Momoa, Bradley Cooper, Luke Evans, and Jack Houston were all cast as Eric, the crow, at some point during production, with Skarsgård being the one to permanently book the gig. Rupert Sanders, Snow White, and The Huntsman has signed on to direct the crow remake with a budget of $50 million, roughly what the original $23 million 1994 budget would be worth today. Currently, there is no release date set for the remake, though the scenes were shot last year, and IMDb marks the film is currently in post-production. Stranger Things star lands lead role in 80s cult horror remake Stranger Things' Jamie Campbellbauer will play a lead role in the remake of the cult horror Witchboard movie series. Stranger Things star Jamie Campbellbauer is gearing up to star in a remake of the 80s cult horror film series Witchboard. The remake will be directed by Chuck Russell, who also co-wrote the script with George McKay. McKay and Russell are producing with Cade Vu and Bernie Guisler via Deadline. No word on who Jamie Campbellbauer is playing in Witchboard, but there is already an in-death description for the film, so we can take some guesses. The film is about a woman named Emily, her fiancé Christian, and a group of friends who open a cafe in New Orleans when Emily finds an ancient pendulum board that can summon spirits. The group calls upon a cult expert Alexander Baptiste to help with the spirits, but he has secrets of his own. Jamie Campbellbauer is starring in Witchboard, so it seems like he may play the fiancé, but the role of a cult expert Alexander Baptiste seems right up his alley. The star's critically acclaimed role as the horrifying Vecna in Stranger Things will likely lead to plenty of horror-tinged roles in Bauer's future, including a return to the Vecna role. While Netflix is keeping things close to the vest about the final season of Stranger Things, it seems likely we'll get to see Jamie Campbell Bauer return as Vecna before we see him in Witchboard. At the end of the previous season, the Hawkins crew was able to defeat Vecna, but he seemingly escaped with his life. With the Upside Down and the Mind Flayer bleeding out into the real world, it seems likely that Vecna will play a major antagonistic role once again. There's no word yet on when we can expect the next season of Stranger Things. Best guesses put the release window at some time in late 2024, but we'll just have to wait and see. Along with Jamie Campbell Bauer, the rest of the main cast is expected to return. Before we see Jamie Campbell Bauer in Stranger Things or Witchboard, we should get to see him in a new horror film later this year. Bauer is starring in the film True Haunting, which tells the story of the first televised exorcism on NBC back in 1971. Along with Bauer, the Gary Fletter-directed film stars Aaron Moriarty and Mitchell, Paul Leonard Murray, Harriet Slater, John Tinch, 
Emma Gajkovic, Ian Shaw, Anastasia Everall, and Leonardo Tywell. Jamie Campbell Bauer will start filming Witchboard in May, which should give the actor some time to reset after finishing his filming for the Kevin Costner epic Horizon. Horizon is a 15-year spanning tale of the settlement of the American West. Costner directs, writes, and stars in the film alongside Bauer, Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington, Michael Rooker, Isabel Furman, Will Patton, Michael Angarano, Danny Houston, Abby Lee, Thomas Hayden Church, and Luke Wilson. There's no word on when we can expect to see Jamie Campbell Bauer in Witchboard or any of his other projects for that matter. Stranger Things Season 5, Horizon, and True Haunting don't have solid release dates yet, but hopefully, we'll hear more soon. We'll keep you updated on all of Bauer's upcoming projects as well as all Stranger Things news.